Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for a friendly, helpful vermicompost community, you are in the right place. Today I'm going to start a new bin from one of my old bins right after we fluff and feed it. The last time that we fed this current one was about four weeks ago and I fed about a half a gallon or two liters of period food and about four gallons of prepared bedding. My hope is that the pureed food has lured them out of the finished end of the bin so I can grab a handful for my new bin right here. We're going to talk about the difference of how a new bin works and how a bin that is very established works and what the difference is. And as we take care of the European nightcrawlers, I'm going to talk about the three differences there is between new bin and old bin and how they behave and what the difference is that you might notice when you're starting your new bin. All right, let's get you put down. Let's get a bit of a harvest and get rolling. All right, here we are at the finished end of the bin here. You can see everything has started to dry out and I'm not having a lot of worms that I'm seeing right here. So I'm going to do a little bit of a harvest of this end before we move things Okay, down. so I'm just gonna skim off the top here and put everything that is worm free in the bucket. Uh, last time we got about two gallons of a harvest and seems reasonable that I can get the same amount. I have put in a new raised bed so I really am definitely needing the harvest more so than usual. So I might be pushing this a little bit. With the new bed I'm probably not even going to sift this because it's going to get incorporated into the soil in the first you know foot or so to help the microbes get going in my brand new outside um, raised bed. And since the castings will probably be distributed within the soil, then I'm not gonna really worry about little flakes of, I don't know, Amazon tape or, or things like that. It'll be just fine. And if there's any cocoons in there, that will be just fine too, because then they will start a new worm colony in my new outside vegetable bed. All right, that's about all I'm gonna take out of there. I started running into worms, so let's start fluffing. Okay, well, the whole point of the fluffing here is to, of course, get some air in here. This bin is about a foot deep, so you can see that it stays very moist. A little bit of tape there. Get some air in there, and that will help, you know, dry everything out for the next harvest and then also if there's any worms in there it'll help them get some air. So the first thing that is different from old bins and new bins is that harvests pretty much. It's going to take about six months or more for a new bin to start really giving you um, worm compost that is high in castings. You can always harvest it sooner and be happy with worm compost which is going to have a lot more of the unfinished organic material but if you want a lot of castings then you're going to have to be patient and wait for about six months in order to get to this level this was food about six months ago it was amazon boxes and people food so when you first have a new bin, you're going to be taking care of the worms for half a year before you see any return on your time and investment. And sometimes that causes new people problems. They think, well, if I feed them more, they'll go faster. And that's just not true. The time that it takes for the biology in the bin to get going, whether it be the microbes or the macro critters like the pill bugs in the bin, um, you're just literally going to have to wait for those populations to get up there so that the bin can cycle faster. But until then, unfortunately, you are just going to have to wait. So the amount of time I basically can harvest every single month from this bin, whereas the new bin that I'm going to be making a little bit later in the video, I'm going to have to wait six months before I see even one little handful of castings that I can harvest from it. So that is one of the differences between new bins and old bins. Now, if you're interested in an entire playlist about a brand new bin, I will link that at the end of this video. I do have a whole playlist, um, compost for beginners. And I will link that at the end if you're interested to follow a bin just from the beginning. 
Now the reason I'm starting a new bin with my European night crawlers is that once summer gets rolling and I can take my figs and peppers outside, I want to get the other half of the European night crawlers, uh, the other half of this barrel as a working bin again. Right now, all of that space is being taken up by a fig and pepper jungle, which I'll show you a picture of here in a second. So this is pretty sticky. So this really absolutely needed to get. We're getting to the part that's probably about five, four or five months ago. You can still see there's bedding. You can still see, you know, little nuts or little seeds left over from the food. So that's one of the hard things about having a brand new bin, just waiting. All right, still, still fluffing. So one of the other things, the second thing that is different between an old bin and a new bin is the presence of babies. And right now you can see all these little European night crawlers. They're bigger than red wigglers when they're babies. This one's probably been hatched this week. Look at that. Isn't he cute? Good worm. So you'll have to wait for the babies, which also means you have to wait for your population to increase. Now, what I'm planning on doing here is using a 10 gallon bus bin and going to use a handful of worms, which in my case is about a half a pound. And that is what I'm going to start my bin with. And then I probably will do it again every time I feed, just to kind of build up the population so when I start the other half of that barrel, I won't be starting from nothing. The last time that I did this, I just tried to harvest the whole bin and split it in half, and that was just kind of a mess, quite honestly. So I think I'm just going to have a starter population to do it this time. Okay, now that we're at the feeding end of the bin, let's see what it's doing. Let me flip you around. Still seeing a lot of worms here. So that's good in a way. I was kind of hoping they'd all move to the very far end so that I could catch them for the, for the new bin. So it might not be a, a wonderful worm ball that I had wanted, but uh, even if we grab these, we'll be getting worms as well as cocoons and little babies, like you can see at my finger right there. So, you know, best laid plans, worms do what they want, right? So still getting, we're getting closer to the feeding that we did last time, which was the uh, two liter blender of, uh, I think it was rice and onions and vegetables and eggshells. Yeah, you can see all that bedding is still very recognizable there. Added about four gallons of bedding. And um, that's really what I preach. You will never go wrong with doing more bedding. Okay, so trying to get this under here and hopefully we'll get a worm ball. Well, not a not a proper worm ball, but that'll be good enough. So I'm going to take this handful here and I'm going to move that to that 10 gallon bin that we saw a minute ago. That will probably be a half a pound of worms. If I find a really good worm ball, I'll probably grab that too. But uh, for right now, I think that'll be good. I can start another one the next time that we're in here. So what's really interesting is you can see right there on the edge, you'll find all these castings for where they all collected in one spot. I always think that's really cool where you can, you know, when they're all inside you, of all the bedding material, you can't really tell. But when they get on the top of the bin or on the side of the bin and they, they eat and leave their castings, I always think it's kind of cool to see a concentration of pure castings. Because really what I end up with at the end is really worm compost. Well, there's a big guy. Hey, buddy. Is this your kid? Here. Go play. So most of the time, like I said, I was I get uh, worm compost, which is still some of the, you know, the Amazon boxes and stuff that are not 100% broken down. And that's okay for me. It's organic matter for the garden and for plants that I put it in. Because I, I often use it as a top dressing. Some people were asking, you know, why do you have to do this and this? Worm bins are really what you need them to be. You don't have to follow my rules. 
basically what you need to do is find what works for you. So if you live someplace in the deep south or you live someplace in Canada where it's cold a lot, you have to find your own way. I can only tell you what I can do in my basement. I do have seasons in the basement where it does get colder, but they don't freeze down here by any means. That is at least, um, you know, 30 degrees Fahrenheit above freezing down here at all times. So they never see a for real winter. All right, let's get these guys fed up. And that actually brings me to my third point about the differences between a new bin and an old bin, which is the amount of food that you can expect these guys to eat. I'm going to put a few handfuls of my prepared bedding down here. And I will put a link to that as well. I know a lot of people ask, you know, this just doesn't look like shredded paper most of the time. And this is something I make up ahead of time with either coconut, coir, or peat, whatever's handy, and the shredded cardboard, and then also some kelp meal at the very minimum with some castings. Let it sit so it's kind of uh, like baby food for worms. All right, so what we have here is the feeding for these guys, or at least part of the feeding for these guys. And like I was saying, the difference between a new bin and an old bin is the volume of food you can feed. It's not just about the amount of worms that you have, it is about the age of the bin. So in the case of this bin, which is very old, I can give them a very good feeding and they will get to it when they get to it, but all of the microbes and everything that are, is very rich in the castings in the bin are gonna get working on this so the worms can do it. If you have a brand new bin, you're not gonna have that. You have to wait for that population of microbes and other bugs like pill bugs and springtails and mites to build up to speed up the food consumption. So the food consumption goes up as the bin critters come. And so when you're new, that's why you can only feed a very small amount of food because it's just the worms and maybe a little bit of bacteria to help them. But once they get going with all of their friends, they can really roll on a lot of food. Now let me get them some puree. Uh, eggshells and in this case cat food because my cat's being very picky she's pulling out all the little crumbs and she doesn't like them so I figured well I'll feed it to the worms they'll eat it right I know that doesn't look very appetizing for people but the worms are going to love it as are all of their little critter friends and then I cover it up with another layer of bedding so that it's not uh, right out there ready for the flies or whatever in the basement. And then this bin is done. Let me get that 10 gallon bin and we'll get that started. Okay, here we are at the new bin and here is the worms and the bedding from the previous bin. And I'm gonna grab a handful extra of the almost finished castings so that I will bring all of those nice microbes, etc., with them so that they can have a more home-like environment. So I'm gonna mix this through thoroughly. And hopefully because it has the home castings in it, it will be more easy for them to get started in here. So I'm only going to put half of one banana in here and this this is still a little bit frozen but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this right in the middle and i'm going to bury it and we are not going to come back you know for another three weeks or so and i'm willing to bet that will still be in there a little bit you don't need to feed them very much when it's a new bin they've got all this paper to go through that's been resting for a while and they've also got that to eat. So that half a banana will be more than enough for this handful of worms for the next three weeks. So that really is the third and final difference between old bins and new bins. You can feed the older bins more because they have a better environment. The new bins you need to go very, very slow with. There's maybe a half a pound of worms in here. A half a banana is just fine for a couple of weeks. I'll probably come peek on these guys before the next video just to make sure, but this is more than enough for these little guys until the next time we feed them. 
Okay, well, if you liked the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. Like I said, there is a playlist right here of beginner worm bins. And then over here will be the video about how to make the prepared bedding. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.